What's up everybody, JB Tech Fanatic back again with another video. As always, I wanna start this video by thanking each of you for joining me. If you have not yet subscribed, I'd be so honored if you would consider. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna know when the latest videos are available, don't forget to click the notifications to on. Today we're back with something new from Samsung that I'm pretty excited about. This is the brand new OLED G8 monitor by Samsung. Now this features Samsung's latest technology. We have a lot to cover. We're gonna unbox it, we're gonna go through setup, we're gonna go through my settings. I'm gonna show it, you know, show it to you in action, a little bit of gameplay. Hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to make an educated choice if it's worth your hard-earned money. And if you purchase it, it will help you maximize your experience with this monitor. I can't wait to get started. Let's do this. All right, so let's get this unboxed. Here you can see we have a pretty plain looking box. Not a fan of that. Let's get it open. Nice and protected. That's what we want to see. So we have the screen side facing towards us. You can already tell it's gorgeous. Just a word of caution, this is of course a curved monitor. Grab from the top and bottom. I just recommend holding from the bezel just to make sure you don't break it. I pulled that out for now. Let's see what accessories come with. Power cable, power brick, and then the stand. It also comes with the one remote and we will look at all this closely. Now looking at the back bottom of the monitor, we have our DC in. This has a mini DP port a micro HDMI port, two USB type C, and then of course your power and toggle switch is here. Now I wanted to talk about these connections. As you can notice, there is no standard HDMI connection and there is no standard DP connection. If you buy cables, remember this, you have to look at the specifications that the cables are capable of producing. Most micro HDMI cables and mini DP, they are not gonna give you the full resolution and you're not gonna get the refresh rates that you need. So when purchasing them, make sure that you check the specifications to match what you are trying to achieve. One more thing I wanted to clearly mention, yes, this is a micro HDMI 2.1. We're going to begin setup. For those of you that are curious, they do have a listed wall mount 100 by 100 mm. I'm going to use the stand. So if you want to follow along with me, go ahead and grab the three pieces out of your box and let's get the stand put together. Here we have the three pieces needed. We also have a installation guide if you need. Let's begin by going over a few things. First, if you want a wall mount, this is the piece here needed to wall mount. For the stand, we're gonna use these two pieces. Now, the best way to do this is to leave your monitor in the box facing downwards. Not the greatest for me with the video, but that's the best and safest way to do it. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to put this piece and this piece together. You wanna line up these screws. You can see that they're sort of built in there. You will need to tighten them. It's simply gonna to go together like this. So once it's together, it should line up and be flush. Once you have it flush, you just wanna tighten it down with a Phillips head screwdriver. Remember, it's very important to make sure those are nice and tight and flush. You don't want this falling over and shattering your very expensive monitor. As you can see, I've tightened them down ready to move on. You can see at the bottom here, one, the screw should be all the way flush. You also have your four rubber feet. This is the mechanism already pre-built on there that goes into the back of the monitor. So we have the monitor facing down, the feet or flat bottom would go towards the front of the screen. This little lip here at the top is what you're going to feed in. So you're gonna sort of put it at an angle. Angled top goes in first, then slowly push down. 
and then it just snaps right into place. You should be able to move this around without it falling out. Make sure that it's all snapped in before standing your monitor up. Trying to give you a better look. So it's all snapped into place, ready to go. Now we're going to plug in the power, make sure that it's nice and pushed in. Also remember you have a power brick with a detachable cord that goes into the wall. Make sure to plug that in. Next, I'm gonna use Samsung's mini DP port or cord that they included. Then I have a mini HDMI or micro HDMI. Now this is an HDMI 2.1 compatible with up to 8K. This is not an 8K monitor, but high quality. For those of you that don't know what it looks like, as you can see, one end has an HDMI and then one has like this little mini HDMI cable on it. All right, that's it for now. Other ends go into your PC and or game console. Let's get this booted up. I'm gonna begin setup. It's a lot like a smart TV. You can either use the one remote that's included and or you can use your smartphone. We're gonna use the smartphone. So I have the Samsung Fold 4. Samsung Smart Things is pretty much already built into my ecosystem. If you do not have Smart Things, this is the app there. So go ahead and download it, and then we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Make sure your mobile device is connected to the Wi-Fi network that you want your monitor on. Once you're in Samsung Smart Things, there's a lot of different options. If it doesn't automatically pop up to connect to your monitor, you're just going to go ahead and press the plus sign in the right top corner. Then you would simply click Add Device. You have several options here. You can scan the QR code or scan for nearby devices. As you can see, well, let me move this. When I clicked on the smartphone option, it gave me a QR code. So on our device, we're gonna do scan QR code. Simply verifies the code and we're ready to go. As you can see, it's doing everything for us. Make sure to select the Wi-Fi network that your phone is connected to. It's gonna register. If you plan on using the Smart Hub, these are your terms and condition. You can agree or disagree. Keeps going. All right, so now it's connected. You can name your device. Make sure you have your location set to what you want it on. I set it as my favorite so I can get to it quick and easy. So go ahead and flip that to on and then hit next. Now we're gonna choose our voice assistant. Whatever you choose, you're gonna have to sign in and agree. If you already have your Samsung Smart TV backed up in the cloud, you can go ahead and restore it to your previous, which is nice. If not, you can just go ahead and hit skip. For me, everything has now been restored. I'm gonna hit next. Now I'm gonna confirm. This is gonna restore from my Q9085 inch. So as you can see, we got general information and my home screen. I'm gonna go ahead and click restore. You can click next if you don't want this. This is where you can connect your Spotify account if you have one. Now, this is basically their adaptive volume. Um, I like this. I think it makes it sound better, especially if you're not gonna use external sound. I'm gonna go ahead and do enable now. Again, you can just hit later if you don't wanna do this. Next is your pin setup. Once it says all done, we're good to go and ready to move on. Goes through some animations. We're gonna get rid of this here. All right, so first thing I did is I turned on my Xbox Series X. It will automatically recognize and it will take you to the game hub. As you can see, it has my Xbox icon. Everything else is loading up. All right, so before we do anything, first thing we need to do is we need to go to the settings. So use your one remote for this, go to all settings. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the software update. Scroll down to support, and then you will see software update. Once you click, click update now, you can see there's a new version. Go ahead and let this process, and then we'll move on. 
So the software update has finished and it rebooted. Now let's take a look around all the settings and the features in the monitor itself. Here you can see we're in the settings. We'll start with the picture. Here we have our mode. You also have the size. You can choose depending on what you're watching, 21 by nine, 16 by nine. And I think there's a four by three um, if you're watching some movies. Um, we'll look at that in a moment. Um, it has eye care. Um, for those of you that you know get headaches, this is a great feature to have. Adaptive picture, um, kind of up to you. I normally use this sort of thing in a really dark environment. Um, expert settings, here we have our brightness, contrast, sharpness, color. We just keep on scrolling down. You can see we have the contrast enhancer. Off, low, or high, I keep this on high for myself. Um, cool, standard, warm, one, two, and natural usually go warm too. Um, you got your white balance settings. We have our gamma, shadow detail, and then of course we can choose depending on the source. Um, but right now we're on BT.1886 and then our color space settings. You have auto, normal, native, and custom. So lots of ways to change up your setting. Peak brightness, you can you know really maximize this OLED brightness if you go to high, but again, depending on your environment and what you like, I like it bright and vivid, so I keep it on high. Here's where you can turn on your VRR control, simply toggle it on or off. And then if you ever wanna change everything again, just go ahead and reset and start over. Now let's back out, we have sound output. Now this does have built-in speakers. Um, also, if you'd like, you can connect via Wi-Fi. As you can see, I got a couple of my Samsung um, sound bars there. We can connect those via Wi-Fi. Um, also, if we go down to intelligent sound, I like that on, especially when you're using um, the speakers that are built in. I just think it helps sort of up to you. I recommend playing with it. Expert settings, we have our balance, our digital audio format, Keep that on auto. I turn on Dolby Atmos for those of you that have Atmos systems. Um, auto vo volume, sound feedback. I actually shut this off. This is the sound feedback from scrolling through the menu. And again, you can reset everything. Scroll out, we have our connections. We have our device type, our network, our external device uh, manager will take us to turn on the HDMI CEC. Make sure that's on. Input signal plus is here. Again, you wanna have these um, flip to on. USB source setup, I leave that on auto. USB-C preference, high resolution. We have auto source switch plus. I like this. Display a new activated source automatically. So if you plug in something, turn it on and it's new, it will automatically go there for you. HDMI black level. Now auto works pretty well. Low to me is going to be the best, but auto or low is what I would recommend. Next, we have our input device manager for your Bluetooth devices, keyboard settings, mouse settings, and then we have our device connect manager. Go ahead. Oh, also, it does have Apple AirPlay built in. You have Apple AirPlay settings here for those of you that use that. It's a nice feature to have added into this monitor. Simply click it, go ahead and set up, and you're ready to roll. Now we're going to back out. For those of you, the most important thing is going to be is your game settings. So here we have our game settings. Here we have our FreeSync Premium Pro. You have auto on and off. I leave it on auto. That way we're not forcing anything that's not supported. This also has a virtual aim point. You can turn this on or off. You have white, red, blue, and you can also see what that would look like on your screen there on the bottom right. Pretty nice feature. Now, core lighting. This is the lighting built into the back. And again, we're going to look at that. Um, you can turn that on and off if you'd like, of course. But you can also do different effects. And this is built in, so no external software needed. Next, we have dynamic black equalizer. Now, this is something I like. Now, if you watch the screen, I'm going to turn this down. And as we go up, you can just see that more and more of that sort of dynamic range is pulled out. You just get a better... You know, the shadowing and everything becomes better. And again, we'll look at that with some gameplay, but I leave this on five. That's what I recommend. 
And then we have our HDR tone mapping. We have off, basic, and advanced, left on advanced. And depending on what you have coming in, whether or not you have HDR going in, you can turn this on and off. We'll look at that also in a bit. Now, general settings, we have accessibility. Here is where you can change up your voice guide setting, caption settings, learn your remote. Um, you can actually turn the picture off, like if you're gonna listen to music. Um, you have our multi-audio output, which is awesome. Here's how you would activate. Enable both smart monitor speaker and a Bluetooth device at the same time, so you can have sort of double the audio there. For those of you that like using Bluetooth speakers, you can change to high contrast on and off. As you can see, it just turns it black, basically. I like to look at that better, but for filming wise, this is a little bit better. You can enlarge grayscale, grayscale color immersion, and then here is your button. So basically configure the settings for button repeat once enabled. This feature slows down the button repeat rate when holding down a button on the remote. So you can use this if you'd like, and you can adjust it to how many seconds you want it to do. I just leave it off. Now, back out, you got your terms and privacy. If you ever want to not or give them or not give them to use your smart hub, this is up to you. You can do this here. Um, here's where you can change or set up your voice assistant. You have your broadcasting, if you're gonna use this as a TV also. You have our system manager, time, language, Samsung account, change your pin, usage mode. This is where you can turn it to shop mode if you wanna have like a demo. Uh, parental settings, you can set up a lock. Power and energy savings. Now, here's, again, depending on your environment, brightness optimization has gotten really good on Samsung devices. However, it, again, it's just up to you on, you can set your minimum brightness and it's going to lower it to minimum that and then it'll adjust it up if it's bright and it'll go down by itself. The more you use this, the better it works. But for now, we'll leave it off. Brightness reduction. This just reduces the power. I always leave this off. Motion lighting. This is power consumption when motion sensitive brightness control. I leave that off also. I do leave auto power off to four hours just in case I leave it on. This is an OLED panel, so you do have a small risk of burn-in. Here you can see the available battery. Um, again, you can just simply USB type C charger for your one remote that they uh, include for us. This does have panel care. So panel care is pixel shift. I moves pixels at irregular intervals to prevent screen issues. I turn this on. Adjust logo brightness, prevent screen issues by lowering the brightness of the fixed images such as logos and banners. This is nice to have. You can turn this off. You can put it on low or high. I just keep it on low. Pixel refresh. Adjust pixels to provide a clearer screen. Some features such as reservation recording and voice recognition do not work during pixel refresh. So here you can do this here. You just click it. You can do start now, start after, or cancel. All right, back out, we have our start screen option. Start with the smart hub. It, you can auto run the last app, auto run multi-view mirroring so that you can use the multi-view mode. Um, I love multi-view mirroring, so I leave that on. We'll look at that later. Um, I like it to start with the smart hub, so I turn that on. The only problem that I have with auto run on the last app is sometimes it gets stuck. Um, this happens with my TVs. I leave this off. Off, I just rerun it myself, but it's up to you. If you want to reset everything, start over. Here you go, reset. You're going to have to put in a password. The password is always 0000. Once you do that, it will default everything like it was brand new out of the box. Now, the last category is support. We got our software update. We have done that. We have our device care. We'll look at that in one moment. Connection guide, remote control guide, it has an e-manual built in, remote management, you can call Samsung, they can log in and help you, calibration report, and then of course you can look at the software and about, you know, your serial number and all that there. But device care is something that, you know, this is sort of a little PC, I know it's normally hooked up to a PC, but the monitor itself is running things in the background. If you ever want to, if it's going slow or sluggish and you want to clear it out, you click on device care. When you click on device care, it's going to check out a bunch of things to make sure everything's running right. And the nice thing about this is, is that if it's not, it will help you diagnose that. 
But if you do start device care, what it's going to do is it's going to run through everything. It's going to close all the background noise, um, apps, anything that's slowing it down. And then it will tell you a list of any problems that it might have, or maybe just things that you're using that you don't know and ask you if you want to continue using them. As an example, auto volume is turned on. If I click this, I'm going to do continue using. Um, auto power is enabled. I'm going to continue using. So we're all good. We're going to hit done and we're going to back out. Now you can also manage your storage here. Here you can see that it has, ah, gosh, 2.91 gigs of usable storage. These are the built-in apps, you know, Netflix app, Voodoo app, whatever. You can add or delete apps. There is some apps that you cannot delete. As an example, Netflix cannot be deleted. Why is it that, that they do that? It's because some of these apps pay a lot of money to be in these um, ecosystems, and that's one of them. But as you can see, the ones that you can put check marks, those are the ones you can download or not have. All right, you also have your quick toggle settings menu here. Here we have your support, you have your Wi-Fi connection, intelligent mode, um, you have the sound on and off here. We have our game mode is on, um, zoom to fill, picture setup. This is your game sound mode, so we have game picture mode, sorry, over here, game sound mode over here. Um, let's see, here we go. Smart monitor, sound output, Bluetooth. We have the ability to turn your game mode to auto, on or off. So basically auto, I think is the best. If you're watching you know, Netflix or something, you can always just turn it off if you want, or you can just set it to on. When it's on, the one thing that you do have is you have the ability to hold down this kind of power button on your one remote and you will get this little menu here and this is their gaming menu. Here you can see your FPS, whether HDR is on or off and your free scene VRR, whether it's running. You also have these standard RPG, RTS, FPS, sports and custom um, settings. Um, you have your virtual auto aim, your help guide, and then your overall game settings that you can get to nice, quick, and easy. I like that. So you don't have to go through all the settings to get there. You can get right here. You can adjust your core lighting. You can adjust your free sync. So it's all nice and easy to get to. The next thing you have is your connected devices. Here's where you can see like your HDMI connection. You have your Samsung um, TV Plus, your USB monitor. Um, it tells me we're connected to my RAXE uh router, excuse me, TV access connection guy, and your universal remote setup. So again, um, the one remote is programmed to control whatever's connected to this. Best way to just get it to auto connect is, is to unplug the HDMI. If it was an HDMI device, plug it back in with your one, one remote pointing towards it, and it will automatically connect and it will be able to control, as an example, your Xbox. You'll be able to you know, swipe through the menu using the remote itself. Um, if that doesn't work, you can actually click on this and then you can set up by itself here, more of a manual setup. But again, if you want to add something to this, you know, I don't know, a Blu-ray player or maybe even a cable box, maybe you're going to use this as a TV, you can do that here without a problem. So it will control anything you need. Then we have our multi-view experience. Here you can see we have our internet, we have our phone, we have a computer, we have a webcam, or we can make our own. Making your own is something that you can save to your liking. You can set up the format that you like, and then you can choose what you want it to do. As an example, say you want it to be on HDMI 1 on the left, and then you want to also run the internet on the right. You can do that. And then next time, it's just one click. It's already set for you that way and it will just pull it up. Otherwise you can just use the pre-built and you can always change it up as you see fit. As far as the sidebar here, of course we have menu, which we just went through all of that. Then we have our media hub. Media is really, you know, Netflix, Voodoo, HBO Max, Disney Plus. It has all that here. When you scroll down, you have your Samsung TV Plus. Um, they give you recommendations, free movies, based off what you want to watch or what you have already watched, this will give you more of what you want to watch. It gets very good at knowing what you like and it recommends if it's on, it'll tell you it's on. And then of course, it just has recommendations, what's trending, here's the free movies, you have different categories. 
I use this a lot actually. It's gotten really good. It's on all the newest Samsung TVs. Um, and it's definitely gotten better and better over the year. If you scroll all the way down at the bottom, you can set your preferences here by choosing your provider. You can go to continue watching. So right now you just get these three options. But what's really nice about this, say you're watching Game of Thrones on HBO Max and you stop. Well, since it's checked, it will be in the continue watching category. So you can just jump right into where you left off all in one easy hub. Also, you have parental lock. Now, the next thing is the gaming hub. Now, this is something that appeared last year on some of Samsung's top end TVs. Now, I think most of them have it. Um, it's really nice. You can do many things like you can connect um, a remote or a controller, if you would, to your monitor. So remember, you're controlling your monitor. Now you can have Xbox um, online instead of having an Xbox directly connected, you can actually play in the cloud. So you don't need an Xbox and you can play the cloud games here. They have Luna, they have Nvidia GeForce Now. So they have a couple, everything's in one easy place. You can see it also does recommendations, free playing, just like the Media Hub, but this is all about gaming. And honestly, I think it just gets better and better as it goes by. It lets you pick which collections you like. And it's just all in one easy, colorful, friendly ecosystem that I find, again, extremely useful. I'm just scrolling down so you can kind of see and again go all the way down to the bottom you have game re rating um, restrictions if you want them personalization and a tutorial <laughs> sorry I can't talk all right next is the workspace for all you business people or students this is a great feature also to have again it's just a nice easy to use ecosystem you have your Windows, Mac, Samsung Dex, web services, Microsoft 365. You can also add a web service, access your PC, Mac, mobile, and your work resources. If you connect a USB or Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to the monitor, they will be available um, to use after connecting them to the device or service. The keyboard and mouse can also control a PC connected with a USB-C cable to the PC. So essentially, you're running it from the monitor to the PC if it's connected that way, or you can use it sort of on board with just the keyboard and mouse. So it just gives you another option and another nice ecosystem that is very user friendly. And I really like that everything's together and it gives you both Windows, PC and Mac, and then also Samsung, of course, because it's a Samsung. So last you have your search option here. You just click search and you can search anything you'd like. Nice and easy. If you want to search for a show or whatever it might be, you could just go ahead and use the search option. At the back of the monitor, just wanted to show you a few things. One, I love the stand. The stand is easy to use. If you want to raise your monitor up or lower it, you simply just press down or up. And then, of course, you can tilt real easy. Looks great, easy to use. Also down here it has sort of a cable management. Really the reason why this is important is so that you don't see any cables hanging from the front of the monitor and you really can't. So it goes basically right out the bottom right into this hole and then you plug it in and then in the front you can't see it at all because this acts as a wall. And of course you can lower this almost all the way down to sit flush on your desk so it just looks great. Again love the lighting panel everything just looks sleek a little bit of logoing there razor thin i like the silver color it feels well built let's look take a look at the side here this is from the side again this is a 1800 r curved monitor premium finish on the edges has a nice curve quick view of the top all right so we're looking at the front Again, I wanted to point something out. This does have a protective coating that goes all across the front. Make sure to take that off. I have to leave mine on for a moment. I'm gonna be moving it around because of testing, etc. but that will help reduce the glare. It's gorgeous, first of all. Let me just say, very immersive. It has that deep, um, you know, OLED black levels, of course, um, nearly bezel-less. 
Um, it does have a little black bar there, but it blends in beautifully. You can hardly tell it's there. And then it has that beautiful metal finish around. So again, overall build quality, I really, really like. Here's a quick look at the bottom. You can see it's a little thicker at the bottom, of course. We have our speakers on the left and right side. So overall build quality, absolutely stunning from front to side to back. I love this thing. It's beautiful. It's to go over, so I'm going to go as quick as possible. We are now going to our settings in our PC. This is just our, your Windows display settings. Of course, if you have a graphics card, you can do your advanced settings. First thing we want to do is set this monitor as the main display. As you can see, I have this checked here. Make this my main display. Next, we're going to move on to changing the resolution. And so depending on your PC and your graphics card, this might vary, but you want to set the best available. Now recommended on this one here is 3440 by 1440. So we're good there. And then the next thing we want to do is turn on HDR. This needs to be on if you want to use HDR. If you don't have HDR, that's fine. Once you get it, you can always change it. Next thing I like to do because this is such a wide monitor is I like to adjust the scale. Now this is completely preference up to you, but if you want to take better advantage of this large wide screen, I recommend bumping this number up. Now I'm going to go to 200, but you can go to whatever you'd like. But when you bump this up, you can kind of see what happens. Everything's much more visible and because it's a wide monitor, it doesn't look ridiculous, at least to me. All right, so I went ahead and I opened up my Google Explorer, sorry, my Google Chrome Explorer, I can't talk. And as you can see, it's bright, vivid, and beautiful. This monitor is great for everyday use as well as gaming. It's great for business, school, it's just easy on the eyes. You get that inky black, Every the text is easy to read. I love wide monitors. I really do. It makes such a difference to me. So let's just go to a website that has a lot of text. All right, so here we have Wikipedia. I don't know, it's talking about bacteria today. Anyway, so everything is easy to read. It's bold and it just looks beautiful. Um, it, this probably is not gonna be the same for the camera because it can't catch it as fast. But when I do this, typically on a monitor, you would sort of see everything drag. And that's probably what you'll see in the video because of the camera. However, it's not doing that in reality. So it's crisp and everything moves fluid. And I just like the way it looks and feels. You can also adjust um, the size for your web searching here if you want to make the text larger as always. All right, so now we're on YouTube, you know, because of copyright, can't show a lot of stuff. But what I wanted to do is a couple things. First, I wanted to show you sort of what like a YouTube video would look and feel like. Um, as you can see, the website is stretched out, but you honestly, in reality, it looks great. It doesn't look ridiculous. Again, opinion, maybe you think so, but I like it. So what you would do here um, is open up a video and the reason why I'm going to open up a video is because I want to go over the settings I use for the actual monitor when I'm using it for everyday things like surfing the web or watching videos. Okay, so I'm playing one of my videos here and what we're going to do now is we are going to open up the settings menu. All right, so I put the video to 4K resolution now go ahead and grab your one remote and open up your settings menu. We have two options now. We have entertain and we also have graphic. Entertain I recommend for YouTube, any social media and surfing the web. And then graphic would be more, you know, it's if you like that more realistic look. Now we're going to go over the entertain settings that I use again. You can do whatever you want. Now at picture size, we have 21 by nine. I have the eye care set to off. Again, that's up to you. Expert settings, we go brightness and contrast at 50. Sharpness at 10, color at 32. We're gonna have the contrast enhancer on high. Color tone, honestly, it kind of depends for me. I either like cool or warm too. And honestly, even the natural's nice but I find myself using cool most of the time. So we're gonna keep it on that. 
And then here we're gonna go to shadow detail at a plus three. And then I actually put this one here, the ST.20842 plus one. Now once that's completed, scroll down and we're going to keep it on native. And the next thing you wanna make sure you do is turn your peak brightness to high. Now it's going to default on off. I like it on high. That's the settings. Next, these are my graphic settings. 21 by nine, expert settings. We're going to go 50 and sorry, I don't know how this defaulted up. Contrast, we're gonna set this at 45 this time. So 50 brightness, 45 contrast, sharpness three, color 24, scroll down, contrast enhancer. I actually keep it to low. You can shut it off here if you'd prefer. Color tone, I use natural. Here you can see my gamma, ST.284, negative one, shadow detail plus two, and then our color space settings, again, at native and peak brightness to high. Another thing I like to do sometimes, it just depends on how, if I have a headache or not, setting this to auto or normal, again, see what you like more, but auto sometimes is an easier way to do this. So now you'll be able to see down here, we have on entertain, you see we have HDR, and then if I flip graphic HDR, now again, entertain is the way I go most of the time when I'm watching or just using overall, just throw gaming out, everything else is what I use entertain for. All right, so I just want to be clear what I use for gaming. Now, again, these are just the base settings. Sometimes I adjust them depending on the game. However, to have your game settings, remember you have to have some sort of game playing in the background to adjust them. I just put this on again, um, my son's Fortnite. Anyway, so picture size 21 by nine. Now, again, you have three options, 16 by nine and four by three. I like 21 by nine. Again, do whatever you would like here. Now, once that's set, we can back out here. You also have eye care available. Expert settings. All right, so here we have it. Brightness 45, contrast 50, sharpness 10, color 28, scroll down. Contrast enhancer. I either use high or off in gaming cases only. So it's kind of up to you, see what you think. But for now, I'm gonna keep it on high. I use a cool color tone. And then if we scroll down here, we have the ST.2084 to plus two, shadow detail to plus five. I leave the color space to native. And again, peak brightness, we're gonna go ahead and put that to high. And then I turn VRR control to on. Now my game settings. Game mode of course is on. I don't use virtual aim. If you do, go ahead and turn that on. Our core lighting. So remember, we have two things here. The lighting itself, when it's on, you have the light effect and the choice, sorry, I can't talk. The choices are right here. That is not the same as core sync. Now core sync literally it sort of matches the light effect on the screen on the back. So that is for any game or anything you're doing on the screen that's happening. If you just want the lighting effect, you keep that off. Now to be able to change the color, it'll say the function isn't available. So what this means is you need to pick one that has it as an example comment. Now, if we click this, it's going to give us our color palette and it will let you change the back color to whatever you would like. Now, this is nice and I like it, you know, it depends on my mood, but let's just keep it on red. Okay, once that's done, you hit done. That is different again than the core sync. If you turn core sync on, that will immediately get rid of the red. It shows red, but that's not happening. If you want that lighting effect to just keep going, you just keep this off, pick what you'd like as an example, breathing, and then you move on from there. Now, the next thing is, is the dynamic black equalizer. This is sort of different per game. I actually keep it at three sort of all the time, but again, feel free to play with it, but I'm gonna say three. Keep it at three. HDR tone mapping, I have advanced, and game HDR is turned on. 
if you don't like sort of the washed out look that the game HDR kind of creates, all you gotta do is turn it off and you can, hopefully you can see that there. It's a little brighter, shut it off. But this is the HDI, HGIG standard. Optimal image quality is set for HDR games according to the content contents brightness information so this is supposed to help you with gaming up to you but the way i have it is advanced and this turn to on now you can see these are my settings that i stick with all the time for gaming sometimes you can adjust completely up to you but that is what i use now the next thing i do if you take your one remote hold down the play you're gonna get your little game bar here now this is a quick to toggle we have our PG, RTS, FPS, Sports, and Custom. This will make a difference. In order to see the difference, you have to click. So we're on standard. See when I click, it changes, changes, it changes. You know what? One that I do use other than standard, besides custom, of course, is I like the way the RPG setting is. So sort of up to you. But what I usually do is I just set it to custom. That's me, ready to go. You can see your FPS, HDR is on, and we're ready to go. And do not forget, you can get to your game mode settings here really quickly by going to the end game settings. When you click this, pops up that menu for you. You can see my settings there. And once you're here, if you wanna jump over to the picture settings, you can do so. And again, already showed you, but just wanted to show you how quickly you can get to them. So starting with the Xbox Series X, something kind of interesting that I've noticed. With game mode on, you will lose most of the abilities here. Sort of strange to me. As you can see, the check marks, 4K UHD, 60 Hertz. We have HDR, 1080p, 120 FPS, yada, yada. Okay, I'm just gonna show you this. Now, I'm gonna turn game mode on and I want you to watch what happens. So now I'm gonna toggle, toggle, excuse me, game mode to on. Now look what happens. Your TV is set up to support 1440p at 120 FPS and everything else is marked to unavailable. So this is where you got to pick what is more important to you. If you are wanting 120 FPS, and you want to play at 1440p, turn game mode on and go ahead and use it. If you want 4K and HDR, go ahead and click game mode to off. And again, this could change with software updates. Then you have all of this available. Really, it's about preference. But in case you were wondering why you didn't see something, that's why. So now I'm going to show you a little bit of gameplay with the Xbox Series X. I mean, it looks great. It's vivid. It's detailed. And it really is a great experience, especially for you console only. You know, if you prefer console over PC. I mean, really, everything is fast and fluid, and I, I don't have any issues whatsoever. Definitely worth buying this monitor just for console play. I'm now going to share my personal settings. These are just my suggestions. Feel free to do whatever you'd like. We're going to start with movie settings. Now, this is actually Disney Plus. Sorry, I can't really show anything or they'll just pull it down for copyright. First, I wanted to talk about dynamic, but before we do that, we have something called Zoom to Fill. Now, this is not always available. However, it is on Disney Plus. This allows you to utilize your entire screen. You can have it on off, Zoom 1, and Zoom 2. As you can see at Zoom 2, it fills out the the um, entire screen, and this is what I recommend doing anytime it's available. So starting with dynamic, we're gonna move to the settings portion. This is what I use. Brightness 50, contrast 50, sharp 6, color 27, 
scroll down. Now, apply to all sources, makes it easier. Picture clarity settings, I set it to auto contrast, enhancer to low, color tone standard, um, gamma ST.284, I do that to plus one, shadow detail plus two, native color space settings, and then peak brightness to high. Next, we have standard. Go over to standard. Again, this allows us to have zoom two, that is on. Brightness 50, contrast 40, sharpness eight, color 28. All sources, again, picture clarity settings to auto, contrast, enhancer to high, color tone, cool. Go down to gamma plus one and shadow detail is plus three. Now I also leave this on native. Another one that, you know, I kind of go back and forth on this one is I'll go to normal. And that's kind of up to you. I do find that in some occasions, normal looks more natural, but you can also use auto. But we'll leave it on native for now. And then we will go back again, peak brightness all the way up there. Now, the last thing we have is movie mode. But again, we're on zoom two. Expert, here we go. Brightness 36, contrast 44, sharpness at two, color at 25. Go to picture clarity on auto, contrast, enhancer to off, warm two. And to round this off, we're at ST.2084 plus one, shadow detail plus five, color space settings set to auto. And that is the three, and I recommend these for anything, 4K HDR, um, anything that you might put into this. I mean, I don't really know what you'd watch that's under 1080p, but really for this particular monitor, especially since it's not a big TV or something, these settings could basically be used for everything. You just are gonna flip through whether you want dynamic standard you know, standard would be for basic viewing. Everything else is just a matter of preference um, via movie or dynamic. If you like bright, bold, and vivid, dynamic is the way to go. If you want more natural, definitely movie. And then if you want just something that's easy on the eyes, good for everything, standard is the way to go. Here are the speakers and you can sort of see what this is capable of doing. I'm going to run it through the retail mode. All you gotta do is go ahead and put in the pin zero four times and let it begin. I'm gonna put the mic over here so you can hear it. I'm gonna crank it up, so let's begin. vivid, 
black, inky blacks, vivid and beautiful. I have my notes in front of me. We're gonna go over the specifications. I'm gonna to try to just cover what I think you probably would really wanna know before purchasing this monitor. Again, this is the Odyssey G8 QD OLED curved monitor. It features a refresh rate of 175 Hertz. It has a maximum resolution of 3440 by 1440. It has a response time of 0.03 milliseconds. It features FreeSync Premium and AMD Adaptive Sync. It has 34 inches of screen. Of course, we already showed you the back. We have the small little <laughs> HDMI 2.1 port and it has a mini display port. This is the silver color. Right now, it's the only one available. Now, it is a flicker-free eye relief feature. Great for your eyes if you get headaches. It has a contrast ratio of one million to one. It has an aspect ratio of 21 by nine, and then it has a brightness of 250 per square meter. It does have HDR. It features HDR, HDR10+, and it is Versa certified display HDR 400 to true black, excuse me. It has horizontal viewing of 178 degrees and it is not a touch screen. Now, again, you can mount this on the wall or you can use the stand. We took a look at that on the setup portion. It does not have a built-in webcam. Um, if you do get this monitor, Samsung Slim Cam is a great webcam to go with this monitor. Um, we'll talk about that maybe later or in another video. All in all, this thing goes for 1500 bucks, so it's definitely pricey, but it is a very premium product. And remember, the QD OLED panel is some of the newest tech out. The first TV Samsung released with that technology was just last year. So you are paying a premium, but it is a beautiful monitor. Now, let's go through the review really quickly. First, let's talk about the sc screen quality. The screen quality to me is so beautiful. Those of you that love OLED panels and the deep black inky contrast and blacks, you got that here, but with that QD, you're getting that extra brightness and it's just vivid, bold, and beautiful. No tearing, lagging, stuttering with my gaming at all. It just is gorgeous. I love it. I mean, it's 175 hertz. Some of you want 240 or more. Honestly, more than enough for me, and it's just gorgeous. Let me say that again, gorgeous. Now, the brightness is much brighter in real life than the, the 250 number that's listed in the specs. In my opinion, it looks much brighter than that, but gorgeous. Build quality. Again, stunning build quality love the finish it just looks sleek um, the stand is great it's not wobbly you can do what you need to do tilt your monitor it's not going to fall over on you i love the light on the back there's a few things i think they can improve improve one i would like to see lighting go around the whole monitor i know that exists it just does a better job when you're trying to get it to bounce off that wall as you can see i'm crazy about rgb but that, that nice ring light on the back is still gorgeous. Um, you know, you can have it where it goes the same or matches the screen, or you can just have different colors as we saw before. But all in all, I'm glad it's there. It could be brighter, but it's there and I like it. Speakers. Now, I don't know how you feel about built-in speakers. Most of the time, built-in speakers are not gonna give us what we really want. They're pretty good. They could be better, but being able to connect via Wi-Fi to some of Samsung's most premium bars and of course other products, I still think you're gonna go external. But if you live in a dorm, small apartment and you don't have speakers, it's definitely gonna get you by. Now, let's talk about other than gaming. So for gaming, I give this a 10. Love it, awesome. Multimedia, so this is basically a TV too. It's got everything some of the top end TVs have in it. You can stream Netflix, Disney Plus, whatever you want. Looks great. You got HDR. It's 
an OLED panel with a curve, right? That 1500 or 1800, sorry, curvature, it just is so immersive that when you're watching a movie on Netflix or what have you, it just really draws you in and it makes you want to actually start watching it on your monitor. So it's awesome. I'd give it a 10 actually for content viewing because it's an OLED panel, a QD OLED panel, and it looks beautiful. So gaming, multimedia, 10, 10, build quality, 10, so what's lacking? Two things I'm not happy about. One, as we just said, the speakers, okay? They could be better. But really, my biggest problem with this monitor, and I really, I don't understand, maybe I'm just missing something. Why not have a full-size HDMI 2.1 port or full-size DP port? I don't understand that, I really don't. And the reason why that's a problem is it's, there's not a lot of, those mini or micro cables out there that are high quality. It's, it's kind of hard to find and it's tricky for a lot of consumers. And I just feel like a lot of people are going to complain about this monitor saying it's not doing something because their cable is not compatible with the specs that they're trying to get out of it. And I'm going to tell you this right now, most cables that you are going to buy are online or Amazon are not going to push even 120 FPS through this thing, they're not probably not even going to give you 1080p. So you've got to be careful to which I ask the question, why even bother? Why not put full-size ports? That's my only complaint. However, that can be a big deal. So if I was to rate this monitor 1 out of 10, I'm going to give it an 8. But that 8 means this is the best gaming monitor, in my opinion, at, for an OLED monitor out. That's my opinion. Maybe you think I'm wrong, but for me, it just is too immersive, performs too beautifully for it not to be. It makes you want to play more. It makes you want to watch more. And all in all, when we live in a world of displays, Samsung, whether you love them or hate them, they make the best screens. LG's close, but this is it. And it's in this monitor right here. You're going to pay a premium price tag at $1,500, but it's because you're getting a QD OLED panel. Remember that. Remember to get the proper cables, and you will love this monitor. All right, well, that pretty much wraps up my review on the all-new Odyssey G8 OLED by Samsung. This is a product that I highly recommend. It's beautiful. It performs so well. And honestly, it's just a showstopper. If you're in the market for a QD OLED monitor that literally can do almost everything a high-end TV can do, this is definitely a product that you should check out. I love it. It looks great, performs great, and I really can't say enough about how much I love this monitor. As always, I'd like to slow things down for a moment and remind you life is so short. Don't forget to love your family, love your neighbors. Go out today and do a small act of kindness for someone. It is amazing how the smallest act of kindness can make such a change in someone's day. The world is a complete mess right now, and the only people that can change it is you and I. Remember, I do YouTube for you and you only, so if you need me, you can come follow me on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at JB Tech Fanatic. Best place to get in contact with me is in the comment section. I would love to invite you to subscribe one more time if you have not. Thank you so much for all of you that have been supporting me. I cannot say thank you enough. I can't wait to talk to you in the comment sections and see you in the next video. And until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic and I'm out. Peace.